Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Nigro with a screencast for Chem Calculations. This one's going to focus on acid base titrations. All right, so first, what is a titration? Well, it's, it's an experimental technique um, that we use to determine usually the concentration of an unknown acid or base. All right, the setup's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to use this tall, skinny, and sorry, excuse my drawing, it's not the best, apparatus with a stopcock on the bottom. All right, this is called a burette, right? It's got graduations on it, just like a graduated cylinder, except it's pretty accurate. It's got a lot of graduations. All right, and in the burette, you put an acid or base of known concentration. All right, and that's key, that known part. So we know what the concentration is in there. All right, and then below that, you're going to have a flask. All right, and in that flask is a base or acid of unknown concentration. So if you have an acid in your burette, then you have a base in the flask. And if you have a base in the burette, you have an acid in the flask. Sorry, I don't know why that came up there. All right. The other thing to keep in mind is down here in your flask, you're also going to include some sort of indicator. All right, and that indicator is going to be pH sensitive. So we're going to use that as a way to tell us when our titration is finished. All right, you also will see some setups will use a pH meter, which is a lot more accurate than our indicator, but it just kind of depends on what's available in your lab space. All right, so this is our setup on the right. All right, uh, titration is a gradual addition of whatever is in the burette to whatever is in the flask that stops at the equivalence point. All right, and stops is not the best word. Usually you go a little bit past it just to make sure you've finished, but all right, the goal is to get to the equivalence point. And at that point, the moles of the acid are equal to the moles of the base. All right, so that's what we're looking for in terms of the equivalence point. All right, there's another term that we use quite a bit when it comes to titrations called the end point, right? It's really easy to mix up end point and an equivalence point because they both start with E, right? But the end point is a pH value that is determined by the indicator. It's the pH value where your indicator changes color. All right. Uh, for something like phenolphthalein, for example, phenolphthalein is clear at low pH values, and then right around 8, it turns pink. So as soon as you have extra base around, it's going to turn pink. All right, now ideally, you choose an indicator where the endpoint. is close to the equivalence point. All right. Usually when you do a titration, you have to do a couple trial runs. You have to figure out, based on stoichiometry, where that should be in general. Um, and then you choose your indicator. But as a general rule of thumb, if you're doing a strong acid, strong base titration, phenolphthalein is going to be an excellent choice as an indicator. All right. And then in addition, there are lots of calculations. All right. And these calculations are all going to be either stoic or pH. All right. So we're either going to be using conversion factors or formulas, depending on what the problem wants us to do. All right. Now, we're going to walk through a general titration problem here. We're going to do a couple different steps. You don't have to do these steps all the time, but this is just a way to look at each phase of the titration. 
All right, so we're going to be working with your instructor asks you to conduct a titration of 125 milliliters of a 0.55 molar KOH solution with 0.35 molar HCl. All right, so first we're going to write our balanced reaction. Sorry. All right, so let's see. We've got KOH plus HCl. Those two are going to neutralize one another to form water and our salt, which is potassium ions and chloride ions, so minus one plus one, KCl, which is also aqueous. All right, now I have 125 milliliters of that base, and it's 0.55 molar. And then I have 0.35 molar HCl. And what I'm going to be doing is telling you how much HCl we're going to add at each step, all right, so that we can calc make our calculations. All right, so first, explain how you would set up this titration. So if we think about it in terms of burette and the flask, all right, let's do it that way, burette, all right, that's the known stuff, all right. So in this case, I'm going to put my acid up there. It's got 0.35 molar because that's the one I'm going to be dispensing. All right, if this were a titration uh, problem where we're trying to find the amount of KOH, that would be unknown. All right, in my flask, I'm going to have my base. All right, and I'll know that I have 125 milliliters of it measured out. Now, for this particular problem, we've also been given that molarity. That will not always be the case. Usually, that's what we're aiming for. This particular problem, we're going to be calculating pH along the way. All right. And then in that flask, I'm also going to add my indicator. And this time I'm going to use phenolphthalein. All right. And since it's in a flask with base, it's going to start out pink and we're going to be watching it go clear. All right. As I add more and more acid, that acid will react with the OH minus ions. Those OH minus ions are the ones that keep the phenolphthalein pink. So as they disappear, the pink color should as well. All right. All right. Now the titration curve. All right. So if we had a pH meter, which would make it easier to map as we add in, then we can put together a curve that looks at pH as on the y-axis versus volume of acid added on the x-axis, all right? So the x-axis, our dependent variable is what we're adding in. Our independent variable is the pH value, all right? So up top, we'll have a pH of 14. In the middle, we'll have a pH around seven. And on the bottom, we'll have a pH of zero. All right, now, because we're titrating a base with an acid, all right, our initial pH value should be pretty high. It's a base, and it's a strong base. It's potassium hydroxide, all right? As we add in that acid, we should see the base pH values start to drop some, and then it drops drastically. Whoa, what are you doing, notability? Let me try that again. All right, we're going to see it drop some, then drop precipitously, and then kind of level off like this. All right, so we really have a couple different sections to this graph. All right, at the very beginning, point A, or phase A, this is no added acid. All right, so this is base only, all right, which makes it reasonable that our pH value should be pretty high. All right, now in this area from here to here, give or take a little bit, all right, we'll call this region B. All right, we've got acid added, all right, but it is still the limiting reactant. All right, so in other words, I still have excess base once I do the addition. All right, C is right here. All right, now this is the equivalence point. All right, at this point, the moles of the acid are equal to the moles of that base. All right, and when we have a strong acid and a strong base, then that pH at that equivalence point should be seven, and the solution will be neutral. All right, now that is not the case if you're doing a weak acid, strong base, or weak base, strong acid. The, we got a little bit different shape there. 
But if it's strong acid, strong base, then at the equivalence point, you should get a pH value of 7. All right, and then in this region here, D, all right, this is acid added, but now is the excess reactant. All right, so now we have neutralized the base. The base is completely used up. And any additional acid just continues to drop the pH value, which is why we get pH values here that are less than 7. All right, so this is what a strong base being titrated by a strong acid curve will look like. If you had a strong acid being titrated by a strong base, all right, it's going to look similar, but it's going to start down low work its way up, shoot up, just like we saw before, and then flatten out this way, all right? So it's going to start low and go high, but your phases are going to be the same. The beginning is no added base, so it's low pH values. Then we add base, but it's the limiting reactant, so it gets, gets used up, having additional acid present. Equivalence point right around pH of 7, and then base added but is now the excess reactant. All right, so you can see the curves are very similar. They just start one high and goes to low and the other goes low to high. All right, so let's do our calculations for this particular example. All right, so we're gonna do four different steps. All right, for the first step, that's A that we saw on our graph. All right, no added acid. All right, so that means that in my flask I have KOH and that's it. So my KOH as a base is going to dissociate into K plus and OH minus ions. I check for balancing. It's balanced. All right. I'm going to set up my ice chart. Right. And I'm going to have 0.55 molar of that strong base to start with and none of my ions. And then because it ionizes 100%, I'm sorry, dissociates, all of it's going to dissociate, which means I'm going to have 0.55 molar of my potassium ions and 0.55 molar of my hydroxide ions. After the reaction is complete, I don't have any of the original base, and I have 0.55 molar potassium and 0.55 molar hydroxide. All right, now of these two substances, only one of them influences pH, this one. All right, that is the OH minus concentration. So I'm going to be able to calculate the pOH. Whoops, except I draw that which is the negative log of the concentration of OH minus, all right? So the negative log of 0.55 molar. Plug that in my calculator and I get 0.26, all right? But the problem wouldn't know the pH. So the pH is 14 minus this pOH value, which is going to be 13.7-ish, all right? Now this is clearly basic. All right, which if we look at our titration curve before, we had it very high on that pH scale. All right, so this is reasonable. I have a lot of excess base in there with no acid for neutralization. All right, so our first step of the titration where we haven't added anything, we are just really determining the pH of our base that's in the flask. All right, now we're going to start to add. Whoops. Okay, for some reason my background has disappeared. All right, hopefully it'll come back and I'm just gonna pretend it's here. All right, so we're gonna add 100 milliliters of acid. All right, so a couple things have happened. All right, we started out with 125 milliliters of the base in the flask and now I've added in an additional 100 milliliters of acid. So I have a new V total of not 100 sorry 225 milliliters all right now this is important because when you do titrations you have dilutions oh, i can't spell i'm sorry dilutions going on so we always need to account for that when we get to our actual ph calculation all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the amount and molarity of my acid, and I'm going to figure out how much of my base has reacted. 
All right, so to do that, I'm going to start with 0.1 liters of HCl. I have a molarity of 0.35 moles in one liter. The liters are going to cancel. All right, mole ratio step, right? I'm, oops, not one. I have two moles of hydrochloric acid and one mole of my base. Oh, wait, I'm mixing myself up with my barium hydroxide. Nope, this was one to one. All right, and then this time I'm going to look at it in terms of volume. All right, so I know that I have 0.55 moles of that KOH in one liter. That's my molarity. All right, and I'm going to react 0 0.0634 liters of that KOH. All right, so that's the same thing as 63.4 milliliters. So this is what has reacted. All right, so if I think about what I had to start with, I had 125 milliliters of that base. All right, I've reacted 63.4 milliliters of it. So this is initial, this is reacted. All right, which means that I have 61.6 milliliters of it remaining. All right. Now that remaining, that's been diluted. All right. So I have 61.6 milliliters of that KOH at 0.55 molar, but it's no longer just in 61 or the 125 milliliters. So I need to do a dilution. All right. And I know that the volume of the concentrated has to be equal to the volume of the dilute times that concentration. All right, so if I calculate that, I find that the molarity of my dilute solution is now 0.15 molar. All right, so I used up quite a bit of it and diluted it, so that's why we see such a drop. All right, so this is the concentration of KOH. Now, KOH is a strong base. And because of that, we get 100% dissociation. So that means that for every one KOH, I get one hydroxide. So I have 0.15, come here. Oh my goodness, sorry. 1,5 molar OH minus. All right, and with that 0.15 molar, I can calculate POH the negative log of 0.15, and I find that my pOH here is equal to 0.82, and then for pH, it's 14 minus 0.82, or 13.2. All right, so you can see, compared to the first step where I hadn't had any added acid, my pH has dropped, not by a lot, all right, because I still have a ton of strong base around, all right, but it has dropped from 13.7 to 13.2, which is what you would expect. As you start to use up some of the base, you should see a decrease in the pH. All right. Now, for step number three, right, or what we would call part C on our plot, 196 milliliters of acid are going to be added. All right, now this is total. We're not adding this to the 100. This is, I've added 196 total. All right, so again, I'm going to have a new total volume in my flask of 321 milliliters, 196 plus the 125. All right, and I have a reaction again, all right, between the HCl and the KOH. So I'm going to start with that HCl, so 0.196 liters of HCl, All right? My molarity of my HCl, 0.35 moles for every one liter. That's gonna let me cancel those liters. All right, mole ratio step, one mole HCl, one mole KOH. And then I'm gonna use the molarity of KOH again, 0.55 moles to figure out how much KOH I need to react. 
All right, so that's going to cancel moles of HCl are going to cancel. I'm left with moles of KOH. Plug everything in, and I get I need 125 milliliters of KOH to react with this amount of HCl. All right, so I had 125 milliliters initially. I now have used 125 milliliters, so I don't have any left. All right, so this is the equivalence point. All right, so that means that in my beaker, or my flask rather, all right, I've added just enough acid so that I have no extra acid. I also have no extra base, all right? So I have just the right amount, all right? And at this point, the pH of my solution, because it's a strong acid and a strong base, is seven. Because the only thing left in the beaker is the water and the salt. The salt has no influence on pH, and the pH of pure water, seven. Okay, all right, now for my last step, step D, all right, now I'm going to add 250 milliliters of acid. All right, so again, I have a new total volume. It's going to be 340 milliliters. All right, now for the step above, I was just at the right amount. So now I've added more, all right, so what that means is now the acid is in excess. All right, so I'm going to treat this problem a little bit differently than I did before. All right, I'm going to at this time start with the base and figure out how much of this 215 I needed. All right, now let's start with 0.125 liters of KOH. All right, one, sorry, 0.55 moles KOH for every one liter. Again, that's my molarity. Mole ratio step, one mole of KOH, one mole of HCl. And then finally, I'm going to use the molarity of my acid, 0.35 moles of HCl, one liter of HCl. All right, moles are going to cancel, moles of base are going to cancel. And I find that I need 0.196 liters of HCl. Well, I have 215, so I clearly have more than I need. All right. Now, you could say, well, we just saw that in the one above. I know. Yes, you're right. But what if we hadn't seen it in the one above? What would we have done? All right. So when you're trying to determine which is in excess, you just need to choose one to start with and go to the other and then see if you have enough. If you have enough, then that's the one in excess. If you don't have enough, then that one limits. All right. So we had 215 milliliters initially of the acid, and we have used 196 milliliters in this reaction, all right? Which means I have 19 milliliters in excess, 19 left over, all right? So again, a dilution has occurred. So I need to account for that dilution. All right, so I have 19 milliliters left, and that 19 milliliters has a 0.35 molar concentration. But I have diluted it to a new total volume of 340 milliliters, and we want to find what is that new concentration. So the dilute concentration is 0 0.0196 molar. All right, and this is of HCl, and HCl is a strong acid. All right, so we get 100% ionization. All right, so that means for every one HCl, I have one hydrogen ion, so one hydronium will form. So I have 0 0.0196 molar of those hydroniums flowing around my flask. And from there, I know that the pH is the negative log of that number, 0 0.0196 plug that into my calculator, and have a pH value of 1.71, all right? So now the pH has gone from basic to neutral, and now we are acidic, all right? And this makes sense because we have excess acid, all right? So I know this seems a little complicated, all right, which is why 
practicing each step is a good idea. All right, as you're working through the problems, if you have questions, please let me know. I am happy to help you in any way that I can.